Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. I'm Ken Hamilton. And we're going to talk about playfulness and play yes. for relationships. Yay! <laughs> I wanted to talk about playfulness partially because it's like 11 o'clock at night and we're just fitting this into our schedule. Yeah. And somehow it's still fun. Right. So yay. Right. This reminds me that almost anything can be fun if you want it to be. Um, also, because play has taken, play's brought us a long way. Oh, it really has. Um, the The way that our relationship has grown over the very many years now, um, so much of it has been possible because of how playful it has been. If I had taken the, the the point of view that this is all work that would have felt completely different because it's been hard it's been it has been hard but it's been a joy too right so so many things that have happened over the last 11 years have been really challenging mm -hmm. opening a business together that was a, a big stretch for both of us closing that closing business. that business and all Hard the things. things that happened while we were doing that um trying to figure out how to how to create a family together mm -hmm. um going through two and then three deaths in my family yeah. and a pandemic all of these things I mostly think about how we've gotten through them through communication and boundary setting and right, all the serious adult and behaviors therapy that and we all sorts of things. Engage in. But if I had to name one essential skill, one really essential skill that I didn't know we needed, but has been the difference, it would be play. I agree. So originally when I had suggested that we talk about play, I was thinking that we would talk about how we shifted from using the word sex to using the word play right. years and years ago. Um, we were we were trying to get on the same page about what it meant to have sex, as we've talked about on the podcast. Which before, is always a good conversation. Always a to good have. conversation to have, but we realized pretty quickly that we. We weren't always going to totally agree on what the goals of having sex were. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we didn't even know what we wanted, but we were game to try. And so simply shifting the word from, do you want to have sex or do you want to make love to, do you want to play? Yeah. I found it very It was liberating. Useful, very liberating. It, it was a reminder that we didn't have to be goal oriented, that we could just be in space and time together. Yeah. And... That was helpful to me, but I, but I don't think it's the only way play has been pivotal in our relationship. So I had originally thought we'd, we'd talk about how playful sex has been helpful, but there are all these other ways that play has been really helpful, like getting through grief together. Ooh, yeah. Yep. And um, managing all of the, the wildness of trying to figure out how to parent together playfulness has been a an essential element but i don't i don't know that it has actually come that easily to me all the time even though one of the first compliments i think you ever paid me was that you found me playful mm -hmm. for sure i i pressed fast forward on my life early on I press fast forward yeah, and wanted you dived to into the responsibility of parenting and and then um you and know. taking care of my parents and taking care of other family members. I've been a caretaker and I 
But some of that was just me choosing to, I wanted, I wanted to be the responsible party. Yep. I wanted to do the grown up things. And so I leaned away from playfulness, which I and think into is into responsibility, but they're not really, they're separate not. Things, yeah. That's, they? that's the thing. You're like, you leaned into like the, the adult responsibilities as though those somehow exclude play. Right. And they really don't have to. And so now I'm remembering this fantastic lesson that we got. We took improv classes from Pam Victor at Happier Valley Comedy um, here where we're located in Massachusetts. And learned so much. There. We learned a ton there. So much. And hopefully we'll be back in person before too much longer yeah. to do a little bit more learning. Something I learned there that I don't think I had ever even heard before is the relationship between responsibility and play yeah. is so tight. Mm -hmm. So when you're in an improv scene, one of the first things we learned anyways was that, yeah, you're in service to the scene. You know, what does the scene need? But even more so, and, and this is at least how Pam taught us that worked so well for me is what does your partner need? Mm -hmm. That, that, yeah. like, so when, when all else feels like it's gone off the rails and in an improv scene, that's which is pretty common. much the same as trying to have a family together. That's for sure. It's all improv. If it always can feel like it's coming apart, like things aren't working. And if you look to your partner and try to support them yeah. in doing the best they can in that moment. Yeah. And if is... you're both doing that back and forth, yeah. there is a there's this freedom to then, I don't know, bounce the energy around and to build. Yeah. What is, what does my partner need? And what does my partner need that I have? Cause when you can just give the thing that you have and see that they need it, all of a sudden things start to become lighter and more fun. I, and I'm speaking for myself because I will look at the people around me and think, what do they need? And I won't think about like what my strengths are. And I'll mm. just, I'll just think, well, I'll just bowl through whatever they need. And that's not fun. So that happens with us. Sometimes mm -hmm. you see that I need something. Um, a common thing, a common place where this happens is you'll see that I need to problem solve a business problem. Oh dear. Yes, <laughs> you do. And there you are. And you, that is clearly a need that you have. And it's have. a need I have and you recognize it. So you try to step in and help. <laughs> But you are not I'm a natural laughing because entrepreneur. That's not my area. And and when you yeah. discovered that you were not an entrepreneur and that you enjoy, in fact, working for a company, mm -hmm. that was a good move. But when you watch me struggling with my entrepreneurial ventures, yep. sometimes you want to step in. I want to step in. I want to help. I don't have what you need to help. And that turns the whole thing into work. It is not playful. It is not playful. Whereas um, if I approach that situation from the point of view of, okay, so I don't have the thing you need. So let's figure out where you're going to get it. It's not yeah, for me. And sometimes, sometimes when you, um, when you lean into it and it's too serious, like you, you offer help that <laughs> you don't really have, yeah, right. that takes us off the rails because then I start to feel like I'm trying to explain something to you. We get we get in the weeds. We get in the weeds. And then you start to feel a sense of responsibility for making me feel good for having tried to help you right. in a and way that I'm I like can't. And now I'm like educating you about the just trouble. In right. A and mess. this happens in the opposite direction. This happens when you are struggling with a problem at work as well. Yeah. I yeah. have no Not idea your... what a senior software architect does. I don't know. Yeah. What? what? Yep. I don't know. Yeah. I can help you with um people. People. Relationships. I, I can help you with your work relationships. Yep. I can help you navigate complicated um thoughts about how a team might work together, but I have no idea what all of those ones and zeros are doing. <laughs> and I don't right. even want to. You don't want to. I'm very grateful to all the IT people. So that I don't have to be one. So I didn't know we were headed in this direction exactly. But what I hear you saying and the picture that I hear us both painting together is that so when we when we bring to the table what we have, there's the opportunity for play. If we're trying to be something we're not, 
or something we just don't or have something we just don't have it right in that moment is important because sometimes it's that it's it but if we bring what we have right now to the moment it can be playful yeah and if we're struggling to get there that's not as playful so what is the value of play for you today so you're you're a 54 year old man what when I when I when I think about play, you're one of the first people who comes to mind for me because I see this sort of innate playfulness in you. What's play's value for you? Play's value for me is the reminder that um, that we're living creatures. That we're not uh, not to overstate it. We're not slaves to some system. We're we're autonomous individuals who make our own choices. And sometimes we can choose joy. We don't have to constantly choose responsibility. Like, again, responsibility doesn't mean not joy, but we don't have to choose. Um, you can be responsible and still be joyful. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't be saying the not so much. I can just choose joy moment to moment. Yeah. I I do find you to be a very playful person and you help me remember that that play doesn't look one particular way. Mm. So one of the ways that you introduce that into my world is that you like to you like to actually be in your body and be playful that way so you will move around you um you'll jump over things I will physically or play. yeah or or you know, hop up a couple of stairs at a time, or whatever you you physically play. Um, and just recently, you started dancing with me in the house. It's funny because I was just thinking about dancing as you were talking about that. Yes, go ahead. And that playfulness is such a mood shifter. It's a it's a game changer. It's a it's a mood shifter. And what I've noticed is that when we take five minutes or ten minutes. It's probably even less than that. It's probably it the probably length of a song, is. three, yeah. five minutes um, to dance. Neither one of us is particularly good at it, but it doesn't matter. The playfulness is actually in the fact that we're not doing something we we have any particular skill at or we, we know anything about. So we're just experiencing it. Just That's where it feels different it, yeah. for me from some of the other things that we are good at. Like, it can be hard to play at something you know you can perform really well. Right, because now you feel this sense of obligation or whatever, or like desire to play at this high level, which then turns into work to stay at that level versus the play of just doing it. Which is reminding me too of how it feels now to go out and um, do Olympic weightlifting or some gymnastics in the gym. This feels That feels very, very different to me from this place where I'm not trying to perform for anybody. Mm -hmm. All I'm doing is enjoying enjoying being in my doing. body. It's a very different experience. Yeah. And it wasn't that anybody was requiring me to perform at a particular level before, but I had decided that as a serious business owner, as a trainer, I needed to perform at a per, at a certain level and it it meant that I was so stressed all the time that I rarely enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed the accomplishment, but that's not the same as enjoying being in the moment. And being in the moment is really hard for me. So now I want to loop back to the connection between the word play and the, and sex, because when we shifted away from using the word sex all the time, um, though there's nothing wrong with that word, when we shifted to using the word play and inviting each other to play, it opened up what was possible. Yes. Like, it, what it did, did that mean? What does it mean? What are we going to do right now? Well, we're going to be a little less serious, take ourselves a little less seriously. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's less expectation. There's less. We're not going to try to follow any script. In particular, we're just gonna. Which is funny because play. you wouldn't think that we have a script for sex, except every couple winds up with a sort of sexual pattern. Yeah. And there we are playing out our pattern. And so 
if we say we're going to have sex, there is this sort of subconscious piece of me that expects it's going to go a particular way right. in this way that we do this thing. And I mean, it's not one thing, but you know, a, a set of patterns that yeah. you combine these, these five or six or seven things. And that makes up the sexual pattern that we have. And when we expanded the definition to just be play, all of a sudden it encompassed so much more. Yes. Um, more, yeah, yeah. more acts, more ways of talking to each other, more implements. More I implements, mean, for sure. Yep. Certainly it introduces the whole realm of toys and accoutrement and costumes, costumes and, and role play and all of that. Mm -hmm. It introduces all of that as possibility. But mostly I think it reminds me that we don't have to, we don't have to achieve anything. Yes. And that feels like a huge relief. Yep. So whether we're talking about sex or we're talking about trying to figure out how to parent together, like, cause parenting is a, an in the moment activity as well. You got to be in the moment. That's when the parenting happens. Or if we're trying to collaborate on a new project here in the house, we're trying to actually make our house run. When I'm goal directed, I tend to not be playful. That's that's me. Maybe that's not everyone. Don't want to assume. But when I'm goal directed, I lose a sense of openness and, and ability to be in the present moment. I start living in the past and the future sort of simultaneously. It's exhausting. It's overwhelming. It also kind of puts me in my trauma brain. Mm. I I it, it reminds me there. of yeah, I, I get really pressury on myself mm -hmm. and I start feeling into like all the ways things can go wrong. None of that's helpful when I actually want to just be with you, whatever it is we're doing, whether it's having sex or cooking dinner or you know, dragging children all over the yeah, place yeah. To, to do whatever they need to do or going for a walk, whatever it is. I want to be playful recording this podcast. I want to be playful. And non-directedness is probably the most important part of that for me. Well, and so we we were talking about sex and play. And non-directed sex is very different from directed sex. And you were like, okay, so we have our patterns. And we, we certainly do. But all of us watch movies and TV and read stories and our culture provides for us a whole bunch of patterns that we could pick up if we wanted to. And if we weren't sure what we were doing ourselves, we might feel like that was a thing we needed to achieve. Okay. And it's so hard in to other play words, you're trying to do that. if you're trying to achieve a rom-com, exactly. then you're heading in a particular direction. Yeah. And if you fall short of that, there's this sense of yeah. failure or being mm -hmm. off course that doesn't feel very playful. The same could be said for if you use pornography as a model yep. for what sex is supposed mm -hmm. to look like. And then you you and you're trying to make Which that remember happen. those people are professionals. That is they're Don't try this at home. They don't put that on the, they should. They should say, don't try this at home. We are professionals. <laughs> they're That's professionals. A good point. They know what they're doing. They know how to take breaks. They know how to use all of their their lubricants and their tools and their timing and their camera angles and their editing and their editing. <laughs> I mean, that's important. And yet, and even so, I don't, I don't want to be goal directed all the time. I actually want a break mm -hmm. from that. And when we when we take a break from that and we step away from the scripts that we maybe unconsciously are allowing to drive yeah. our behavior. And when I say we, I mean, you and me. Yes. Yeah. You and me. <laughs> when I step away from those scripts, I can be in the present moment with you. And that is an achievement for me all in itself. It's hard to be in the present moment, but I think I was just listening to somebody just today. I think it was Thomas Hubel talking about how you know, being in the present moment feeling your partner feel you that's intimacy mm. um, cool that that shared sense of actually being with the person as they are right in front of you rather than as what you imagine them to be or like casting your mind back over 
who they've been or getting stuck in a moment. Yeah. It's not that easy. Our, our brains, our brains have, they, they're we really a, complicated and they can play tricks on us and we can, we can get triggered into these we, states where we're not with each other present in yeah, the moment. We, we can be with somebody, but living in a memory or casting our mind forward into the future. And, and living in a memory is a, I mean, that is a thing that has happened to me over and over again. Um, it's, it's something I work on all the time, work on it through meditation, through presence work, through parts work through, there's a, there's a ton of ways, but mostly it's, it's the work of allowing myself the pleasure of being here with you, being present. I really wish it weren't so hard, <laughs> but I mean, I, it feels, I don't think I'm alone here. I feel like, I feel very vulnerable right now, but I don't feel alone. I think that this is a thing that happens to people who've experienced yes. a, a, a any level of of trauma but also people who've just not practiced being present yeah well it, it is easy to be thinking about well you mentioned achievement a little while ago and if if you're going into a situation trying to reach a certain spot a certain outcome um it colors everything that you do and and then you're like bringing all your resources to bear and you're thinking about how you're going to get there and how other people have gotten there and what you've done before that have gotten you there. Now you're in memories and you're in imagination and you're in what could be and, and thinking about other people. And well, that's a long way from just being you in a place with someone else. I'm struck by how, how true that is and how, how to hold next to each other. The fact that I, I truly believe we need to, make plans and, and be intentional and simply having an intention kind of casts you into the future. Mm -hmm. Um, it, you know, like you're, you're having this intention and yet staying in the present moment is what lets you be alive with this person right now. Being human is a paradox for sure. Not simple. Not simple. So before we wrap up, I wanted to talk about some of the ways that we have found to introduce play into places that were once challenging. Yeah. So what's, what's a place that you have found play where you didn't expect to in our life? Okay. One is absolutely doing this podcast with you. I, honestly thought it was going to be a ton of work and it was going to feel like something that was something I had to check off. And instead, mm. honestly, I would recommend it to anyone. You don't have to publish it, but sitting down to have intentional recorded yeah. conversations yeah. has been not just, oh, that's good for us. It's actually just been really playful and fun and yeah. puts us on the same page and, and is a little, it's a little exciting. Uh, uh, it, in that nerve wracking, like, wow, I have no idea what you're going to say right, or what I'm going right. to say. And so, but, wow, where are we going? But here it is late at night at the end of a long work day. And we're doing it because we know and we I've can. And I've been smiling through the whole thing. Yeah, because it's fun. Because in fact, it feels playful. Yeah. Um, another place that is, I, it, it seems strange to me because I expected it to be just work. Um, is parenting. I honest to God thought parenting was just going to be work. I didn't even, when I was a teenager, I didn't want to be a parent. And then a switch flipped when I was 22. And I was like, I want a baby. Had one, then had a series of them. Had many more. Had many more. Then blended my family with you. Had even more. And um, God, I really love having teenagers. I do. They're playful and fun and they remind us how to stay in the moment because boy, they do. They really do. And one of the things that feels so playful about it is I cannot take myself too seriously <laughs> or take what they're saying too seriously. Yeah. I take them seriously in their personhood, but they remind me that they're changing every minute. Oh, it's, it's so amazing. I can, if I can yeah. just stay in the, in the goofiness of it all. And the fact that they don't 
they don't know who they're going to be tomorrow. It's, it's incredibly uplifting and playful. And it's, it's like living in a barrel, barrel of monkeys. And I thought that that would be over when they were done being, you know, toddlers and preschoolers. I just didn't know what to expect. And it is a joy. It is. It really is. I did not expect that. What's a place that you find play? Well, or playfulness, um, back to the beginning of, of the uh, sex, uh, I learned all kinds of lessons through my life that sex was something that was a a thing, a big old, like, I don't know, a, it's a goal and it, it has all these, I don't even know exactly how to say it. it. Had like meaning attached to it or? Not meaning because play can have plenty of meaning. That's true. So it's not the meaning. It was like there were, I'm, I'm going to have to think more about this. But what I know, oh, the supposed tos. There were so many supposed tos in sex. That you but lost. when you introduced, and I, we, we came up with it together, but you allowed me, you gave me a, a safe, trusting place where I could relax into being playful. Then I found out that, oh, I can just be present and not be trying to do something but they just do something and it could be fun. I think it's a place where we have found we could experiment. Yeah. And it didn't have to be. (sighs) That's it. I didn't have to know. Yeah. You don't have to know where you're headed or what you're even going to like. I actually kind of forgot that for all of my life, sex was something that I was supposed to already know about. That comes up quite a lot. I mean, I, I teach human sexuality to, you know, freshmen in college and, I teach it in other places too. And it is surprising and yet not surprising at all anymore. We all think we all get this weird message that we're supposed to have like figured it out or know. And it's normal not to know. Yeah, You're 54. You know everything about sex yet? No, No, me either. And I have a bunch of degrees (laughs) and a whole bunch of certifications that tell me that I probably should. And I learn stuff all the time, including about how my own sexual pleasure works. Like all the time, I'm still like just on that level. And so staying in the playfulness has let me experiment with you, experiment with other partners, figure out what it is I find interesting and then set down the stuff I don't. Right. Sometimes I don't let it go. I don't like that Mm -hmm. anymore. It's not playful. It doesn't feel fun. So maybe I don't do that part anymore. Yeah. There's so many pieces and parts. It's like sex, like Legos. Like, I don't know. There's a whole box of parts. Build whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, just you don't have to use them all every time. <laughs> and I definitely don't follow the instructions. So if you're listening to this podcast <laughs> and you're thinking that the the person or people that you're having sex with um, are expecting you to know something, like to know how it all works, please know that that's their insecurity and they're hoping to high heaven that you're going to tell them how it works. <laughs> It's not that they know and they need you to know too. It's that they're not sure any most more than you the are t- and they're hoping you're going to tell them. Most of the time, people are, are covering that, yeah. that concern up. Yeah. And so whoever is courageous enough to yeah. ask questions and to laugh. Because if you're not laughing at some point during sex, missing an opportunity. Yep. Sex is strange. There's all sorts of weird noises and smells and textures. And I, sex what? is... Interesting, yes, fun, yes, and kind of weird. Yeah. And yeah, so return the laughter by inviting the question. I don't know. Yep. And sometimes things that I find pleasurable with one partner, I don't with another another. So it's not like it's it's there are always going to be experiments to be had. Absolutely. And sometimes something that I wrote off completely, even with like there's there is something that I told you years ago I didn't want. That just two weeks ago, we were like, let's try it again. Oh, turns out I like it now. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Who knew? Yeah, we we grow, we change. Thank God for a sense, yeah, a sense of experimentation and play. It's been super helpful. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Yes. Go play. Go play. (laughs) I think that's the thing my parents probably said to me more than anything else. For sure. I mean, they said go outside and play, and we can't necessarily... 
yeah, maybe that, maybe but, you shouldn't go outside but, and play, depending on what kind of play you, you want to do. <laughs> Take but that. go play. Go play. But go play. Awesome. Till next time. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to jolie at joliehamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the entrepreneur's action plan for passionate, sustainable love is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.